Okay, so um, I propose we kick off. We've got a few more people have joined us and I think it's um, the, the trickles drying up of people joining the, the webinar. So I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar this evening. Um, there's myself, uh, Alan Reese, and uh, Morrow online. So we're the panelists. So this, this is relatively new technology for us. This is the Zoom webinar. Um, so please be patient with us. We're, we're working our way, trying to make it as good an experience as we can for the, um, for the people who attend. So you can see the three of us. Um, we can't see you and none of the other attendees can see each other. Um, the, the way in which you interact with us, if you go to the bottom of your screens, there's a Q&A button there. Um, you can pop questions up on there and they'll pop up on the screen for us. So I'd encourage you as you go through the presentation or as we run our way through the presentation, if you've got any questions you want to ask, pop them on the Q&A. Um, we can either answer them immediately or we can, uh, at the end, we'll certainly run through all the questions and answers that we've got uh, and talk through those responses. There's also a chat function at the bottom. If you need to send a message to us, the panelists, you can um, pop something in there. Um, I'll be monitoring both the questions and the Q&A and the chat function as we go through the meeting. So if there's anything urgent, um, if you need us to stop, if you're not understanding, uh, flick us a message and we can, we can clarify. I believe there's also a function for you to put a hand up. Um, and if you put a hand up, um, it'll pop up on our screen that you know, you've got um, you know, a need to communicate with us. I've got the ability to allow um, each one of you to talk. You know, you, we, can, we can put you on the screen, you can have a conversation with us, um, and then uh, you know, we can move on from there. So a few different ways. Um, feel free to, to practice with what's there. You know, try the chat, chat function, send us, a, send us a message on Q&A, let us know that you're there, um, and we'll work our way, way through the presentation. Any questions we get, you know, at the end of the presentation, we'll, um, we'll run through those and we'll, we'll talk you through our responses and look, if there's anything we can't answer today, we'll commit to taking that away and, and getting back to you or getting back to the community, the whole community with, with any responses that we weren't able to, to answer today. So at this stage, I'm going to hand over to um, tomorrow and Alan um, and uh, they put a presentation up on the screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, Mauro is going to lead us through the presentation. And like I said, I'm on, I'm on standby looking for any questions which come through. Um, a bit of an MC for the evening. Um, Morrow's leading through as a project manager with Alan there as support as our manager of asset development. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed and hope you all get something um, something interesting out of the discussions this evening. Over to you, Morrow. Good, thank you, Will. And thank you all who are listening in. Um, appreciate your interest in this matter. And uh, we know it's important uh, for you and uh, and it's, it's, it's important for us as well. And uh, we aim to, to uh, work together and get it right. So um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce ourselves, which uh, thank you, Will, you've already uh, preempted us on that, uh, provide you with a brief, brief, brief background to the dinner plan activation project and uh, to bring you all up to speed of where we're at, uh, outline essentially why the scope, the scope of the project is proceeding and why the, the project is there, uh, explain the key features and points of interest and uh, outline the next steps uh, that we go from here. Uh, okay, so you know all three of us there uh, that you can see, and we can't see you, of course. Um, so this project, uh, Dinner Plan Activation Project, has been um, in the consultation phase for several years now, as you can see, uh, dating back to December, January 18, 19, uh, where two workshop sessions were held. Uh, in March uh, last year, a further workshop seeking comment on the draft designs and priority list. And November last year, the funding opportunity was identified and community support was confirmed for pursuing the work at Scrubber's End. In uh, June this year, um, the uh, concept designs by Bush Architects, which uh, have been used in, in the consultation phase, uh, were shared with the community for feedback. And in uh, July this year, the detailed designs and the priority order for implementing the components of the project was adopted at a public uh, meeting of council. <clears throat> um, essentially the project's scope is to provide infrastructure improvements to support growth in the beginning level use of the snow and mountain bike parks uh, to improve to improve community access and usability to local visitors and visitors alike, um, and help ensure that the first time visitors become repeat visitors to Dinner Plain and improve the livability of Dinner Plain for residents and visitors with better accessibility and facilities. So 
following um, the community agreement to pursue funding for the Scrubbers End uh, infrastructure works, we uh, applied for funding uh, for a total of 1.4 million, being uh, $500,000 from the Regional Infrastructure Fund and to be supplemented by $900,000 from Council. The funding from the Regional Infrastructure Fund is on the condition that it is to be completed by the 30th of June, 2022. Um, now, this is the Scrubbers End area. It's, it's, a, uh, it's an excerpt, it's a page out of the uh, detailed designs from Bush Architects, which was used in the consultation phase. Hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, and the intent is to uh, provide more parking in both these car parks here. The top one next beside the Scrubbers Hut, uh, beside the Scrubbers Hut, is essentially to uh, rationalise the the parking arrangements there with, with line marking and also providing a drop-off and pick-up zone in front of the Scrubbers Hut. The intention is to um, get in excess of uh, 53 car parks here. I think it's actually 59 we're achieving in there from memory. On the southern side here, the overnight parking facility at the moment is fairly restricted. I think it's about 40 car parks and with a bit of extra uh, earthworks to the embankment, we can increase that by at least 10 or more and then provide and then redo the line marking and so on. Those two car parks are to be simple, supplemented by two more new car parks down the bottom here at Cattle Pen Drive and the extension of Scrubbers End Road over here that hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, that's what's um, the last two weeks we've, we've put out those two designs for consultation with you. Uh, it's been on the council website, uh, which has provided details of, of the sizing and the number of car parks, etc. But over the next two years, uh, these, two, these car parks are proposed to be done in the coming summer. However, next year uh, we want to complete the, the rest of the scope of the works, which is, in, which is to include uh, a new shelter attached to Scrubbers Hut, as well as uh, updating the toilets and, and increasing the toilet facilities here, uh, redoing or replacing the hut at the base of the ski slope, uh, over here at the bottom of the toboggan run, introducing a new shelter and amenities toilets and providing uh, some, some bench seating along the, the tracks as well as uh, upgrading the tracks and introducing more tracks over to the east here uh, which were also provided in the, in the uh, documents on our website over the last two weeks. Essentially to connect various trails and provide an appropriate surfacing with um, crushed rock for the BMX trails. Um, so that's to be completed by next year. But what we're talking about currently tonight is the designs for the car park uh, and at, at this end as well, the two uh, new car parks, the Scrubbers End and, and uh, Cattle Pen Drive. Along with that, we propose to put a fence uh, on the northern side of the depot as a, as a screen fence. That alignment is not correct. The correct alignment is shown on one of the attachments in the website, council's website, but it's generally uh, along that area there, uh, obviously uh, positioned to minimise any interference with, with vegetation and so on. Um, okay, so... Moving on to the next slide. So, as I just mentioned, uh, the Scrubbers End staging is in two stages. What we're looking at this coming summer is additional roadside parking and signage, as I've just mentioned, additional mountain bike and trail connections, and the depot screen fence. Next year, 
we uh, want to complete the works by doing the upgrade to the scrubber's hut, additional shelters and toilet facilities and barbecues, additional mountain bike and trail facilities adjacent to the mountain bike hub at the bottom of the toboggan run, and upgraded path connection from Big Mustard Drive to Pea Shooter Toboggan Run and the mountain bike park via Kabunga Platter Ski Slope. Um, now, why isn't that? Uh, right. The, um, yep. However, um, we've also applied for funding this current financial year of $140,000 to also include uh, the village bay, uh, the village bus bay and shelter, uh, which is at the exit to the uh, dinner plain village. This uh, requires no council contribution. It's uh, we've sought $140,000 to construct the bus bay and the shelter. Uh, and we just received confirmation back on the 3rd of November that we were successful with that. The conditions on this particular grant are that it's be spent by June next year. That is the location of the, uh, the proposed bus bay and bus shelter. Um, so I think that should be quite apparent to, uh, to all of you. In detail, which is, this is a, a page out of the uh, link that was in the, that's in the council website at the moment. Um, on the exit to Horseshoe Circuit from the village, uh, just a, a sealed bus bay with curbing and a proposed new bus shelter over on the northern side, um, approximately nine metres long. I suppose um, we've had quite a few comments regarding this shelter. And um, I think that's a point of contention from a lot of you. So I'd, I'd like to focus on it. And um, um, as you can see there, this is the, uh, the concept that was came out of the Bush Projects uh, detail design, which was used in the consultation phase over the last few years. Um, it's, uh, Generally, it's probably around about, I think, it, you know, it's about five metres long as shown there. But uh, from comments that I've had already, uh, that, that's probably too, too uh, small. And so in the detailed design, in fact, we've essentially increased it to nine metres, which should accommodate, uh, you know, 10 to 15 people at least. However, the fundamental um, feedback I've had is, uh, is functionality and the aesthetics. And I'm sure a few of you will have uh, something to say about that. And we're, we're here to listen to you, essentially. Um, as I said, the uh, detailed designers uh, used this uh, from the concept design as a basis for their design following the, uh, the consultation process. And they came up with this on the on the uh, cross section, essentially on the side view. As I said, it's about nine meters long. And you can see here that it's composed of stonework and a, uh, a see-through uh, side panels, obviously for wind protection. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's a, an adaptation of, from the concept design, essentially. The feedback that I've had from some of you is that we should be looking at something like this, which is the Mount Hotham bus shelters. Well, um, happy, that's, that's one point of view, certainly. And uh, we're happy to discuss that and, uh, and see where that takes us. Um, be mindful that uh, uh, Dinner Plain is governed by its own planning uh, scheme or, 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 uh, or planning requirements. Uh, which are not identical to Mount Hotham. Uh, and they suggest that we should be using a combination of, of various elements, including timber, 
uh, steel, stone. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's food for thought. Moro, could I could I yeah. interrupt at this point? We've had a flurry of um, interest through the Q and A and through some of the, the comments. I'd like to share a bit of that so that yeah um, everyone can hear and Moro and Alan, you you can see some of the comments there. So I'll just work my way through them. So. We've got a, a comment here that um, the bus shelter is an exciting opportunity. However, do we realize it's got no relation to where the village children currently wait for their bus? And this is there's another question as well. Why is the bus they located there? Are you able, Morrow or Alan, to provide any clarity on why that the bus on the, the particular sighting for that bus um, um, bus shelter? Um, I haven't had any uh, advice on that, uh, Will, to be honest. Um, I, as I said, I'm it was a, the basis of the, the concept designs that I was looking at, and certainly that's where the location is shown. I had no reason to question it, uh, but, but if there's a, an issue, well, we need to, to, uh, to look at that. So I think it's worth us taking that away to explore. So um, we, we've got, because there's a couple of people who've made the same comment, and I think there's an action for us here to actually go away and understand why it's there, and mm -hmm. to provide feedback to this group and the, to, to the community to, to make sure we're putting it in the right place. So clearly, it would be a it would be a large miss if we put a bus shelter in a place where it's not required or not used. So let, let's take that as an action to get back to this group. So just reading through some some of the other feedback there. <clears throat> so there's a lot of um, feedback about the design of it. Um, lots of people saying on here it should be like the Hotham bus shelter. Um, it needs it needs walls on the side. We need to protect people from the weather. Um, agree. Use the Mount Hotham shelters. Timber and stonework will require maintenance over time. So there's a couple of points there. One is around shelter from the weather and the other is around selection of materials that don't require um, a lot of maintenance and start looking old very quickly. So, so there's a few points there. Um, we've got some support here, um, just looking for it. Any design must be better than nothing. Getting any shelter built would be a vast improvement. So that's, that's a bit of a thumbs up. At least we feel like we're a little bit on the right track. We might not have it in the right place or the right design, but you know we're heading, we're heading down a track where something we deliver might, uh, might meet what you're looking for. So I think there's a few things there for us to, to potentially discuss a bit further in this discussion, but then some actions for us to take away. So one key one is um, location. So having a look at what, why have we selected that location and does that meet the needs of the, um, the users or the potential users of the bus shelter? Um, secondly is around the, um, the design. So the, I guess the functionality of the design, you know, does it, does it house the right number of people? Does it protect us from the weather effectively when, when we're up there waiting for a bus? And then thirdly, there's around material selection. So selecting materials that are appropriate and aren't going to impose a very large maintenance burden or worse still, um, require maintenance that doesn't get done. So they start looking old and, and dated very quickly. So I think there's quite a few points. I, I've just been watching the comments and it was quiet, quiet, quiet. And then when the bus shelters came up, clearly there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in the bus shelter. So this, this feels like an area where we need to probably focus a bit more attention tomorrow. Yep. Well, maybe just to add to that, I think that there's also some um, suggestions of maybe more than one bus shelter as well, depending on season and the requirements. So I think we need to take that away and understand, I think, the broader picture um, to be able to more fully scope the requirements to make sure we meet the, the needs of the community. Yeah. Yep. No, that's good. All right. Obviously, uh, if we haven't got the location right, that's a fundamental um, issue. Um, so we, we need to uh, uh, take a few steps back there, I think. Um, all right, then. Well, uh, that's the bus shelter. And uh, I, well, we're, we've already, yeah. So the questions are coming in. So essentially, that's the last slide that I have. Um, but um, happy to hear of any other concerns. <clears throat> Yep. Okay. And maybe to help us, um, you know, back to the functionality requirements would be, I think, confirming the the number of people that the bus shelters need to be able to accommodate and get a bit of a feel for sort of maximum numbers, um, so that we can engineer that into the design as well to be able to accommodate that. Yeah. If there are any suggestions, um, 
from participants to give us a, a starting point that'll be helpful. So just, just a couple of other comments that have come through that I'll, I'll just share. So um, one comment is, please don't start again. The current location is great for winter. Worst case, you move the kids during the week, just get something built. So that's a clear message we've heard over the last few years is you want, you want stuff delivered in dinner plane. Um, so I guess we've got a way up. The, the, other, the other constraint we've got is around the funding that Morrow mentioned. So particularly around the, the bus shelter, we've secured funding. The basis for us securing that funding was that we had to commit to actually delivering it by 30th of June this year. So, so there's a bit of, I guess, incentive for us to, to work together with the community relatively quickly to, to reach a resolution on what to do with the bus shelters. Um, but yeah, it certainly seems from the, the feed, from the information that we've shared today, it seems that the bus shelters is probably the, the contentious topic that maybe we haven't got it quite right and we need to do a little bit, of, bit more work around making sure that we're gonna hit the community's needs. Um, another another point on a different topic. Um, Scrubbers works generally looks great, but you might need some tweaking to simplify snow clearing. So that's a good comment as well, and something that we need to consider through the design is how how we how we operate through the winter season and make sure that it's um, it's functional for our um, for our contractors up there to do the snow clearing works. And and I have been doing this in in consultation with them as well, so they're certainly having their say on that. Yeah. Um, another another comment again around the bus. So there'll be greater volume using the bus in winter. So we've got to make sure we consult with Alpine Spirit to really understand what their service looks like, what the numbers are like, you know, make sure we're sizing the bus shelters at an appropriate scale to, to allow the number of people to use it. So take into account what's happening in winter as well. Um, we've got some, so some of the comments say, um, cheaper bus shelters. Um, there are some benefits of cheaper bus shelters around potentially, we can have more of them for the same price that potentially could be moved. If we do get it wrong, you know, a cheaper shelter that's not built of stone could potentially be um, upped and relocated um, at, a, at a lower cost. So, so these are comments coming through. Um, a bit more feedback. In peak winter, there'll be 50 or 60 people waiting for the bus. So we're going to have to balance, I guess, balance the size of balance the size of the, um, the bus shelters against what's a reasonable need. So we could build it for 60, but it'd be a pretty large shelter, or we probably need to have some discussion around what's the optimum um, size of those bus shelters so that they provide, you know, functionality we need without, without being overboard in terms of size. Currently 15 students in dinner plane. Um, the proposed location is fine for winter, but not for summer months is some of the, some of the other feedback that we're receiving. Um, we've had a, uh, question. So I'll push this to you, Moro. So Scrubbers Hut, can the footpath from Big Mustard Drive be delivered sooner than we currently have it scheduled? Could you talk us through what is it that constrains that particular piece of the scope? Um, that can be included fairly easily, I'm pretty sure, um, as part of the other work. Um, I need to get up there and uh, assess uh, the, the extent of the uh, trail work that we want to do. This season, and I'm, I'm just uh, awaiting the uh, the um, vegetation report from our consultants on on how much material we can move. But yeah, but that bit of pathway just really requires an upgrade. Uh, so I think I think uh, we should be able to get that in as part of the other track work. Okay, so is that is that an action for us to to take away tomorrow to have a look at our schedule and whether we can re reschedule yep. some of the works to accommodate that? What what yep. would it mean for our schedule yep okay we'll take that action away um got a proposal can we please use the existing bus depot area what would be the cost of that um sorry i'm not which bus depot area yeah i'm not um i'm not 100 percent clear on that as well um Mez, would it be possible we can allow you to talk so you can come and talk through what that proposal might sound like? Not, not working there. Let's just see. We might have to park that one and, uh, and get back in touch afterwards to seek a bit more clarity on that one. Um, Comment here, we have very good patronage on, uh, we have good data on bus patronage, so it shouldn't be too hard for us to, to actually uh, find out what the, what the demand is on the bus service. So that's, that's a good comment. Mm -hmm. um, 
Question, are we able to add additional parking along the road at the bottom of the ski run? Is that something, Mauro, are you able to respond to that directly or do you want, is that one that you'd need to take on notice to go and have a look at? Um, I'll just go back uh, a couple of slides and I just want to, as part of the, uh, the increase in uh, car park area on the southern side of uh, Scrubbers Hut there, we're also looking at putting uh, a few car parks at that point, which seems to be a, uh, a redundant road that used to, well, still leads to the, the gas tanks, but the gas tanks are actually accessed from the, uh, from the, the car park. So uh, there's a golden opportunity there to make use of that area just off Scrubbers Road or Scrubbers End uh, Road to uh, install some more car parks there. Otherwise, apart from that, it's fairly restrictive, I must say, uh, without significant monies being spent. Um, and obviously there's, there's uh, environmental issues as well, uh, which, uh, which are obviously it's a sensitive area. Um, so what we can physically do is, is quite limited, uh, but that Southern side there uh, in extending that embankment is, is the obvious one that we, we want to get into. Yeah, I see the part of the cross country track network. Um, okay, I'll make sure, I'll, I'll double check that, Steve. Uh, I, I see you got a comment there um, to, to uh, check that. Thank you for that. So we've got a comment here that's, um, that reads, can we have snow making before any money is spent on the toboggan run development, please? So it's probably worth me just spending a couple of minutes to talk about what we're doing around snowmaking on the toboggan run, because this has come up as a priority for the community over a reasonable period of time while I've been around. So we've been engaging with East Gippsland's water. So the, the constraint and what is preventing us from delivering, delivering snowmaking on the toboggan run at the moment is, is water. So that's the constraint. Um, and the way we see to unlock that constraint is to work collaboratively with East Gippsland water. Um, to for East Gippsland Water to make some modifications to the way they treat wastewater in the uh, in the, the water treatment plant up there to essentially bring it to a standard where we would be able to use it for um, essentially for water for snow making. So those discussions are progressing reasonably well. We've got um, East Gippsland Water uh, a support of that. We've been doing a study over the last 12, 12 months that's just come to a conclusion and, and recommendations are to proceed with that work. And we're now in the process, so between ourselves, East Gippsland Water, to start advocating for funding to allow that to happen. So it's a relatively costly change that would be needed to the East Gippsland Water facility, but um, without that, we don't believe we can add additional snow guns onto the existing infrastructure to be able to run snow guns onto the, uh, the toboggan slope. So that's really the constraint. We're aware of it. We're aware that it's a community priority to get um, the toboggan slope um, to get some snow making onto the toboggan slope and, and yes we're working through that with East Gippsland Water. <clears throat> so a couple more questions are around the path. So there's a comment here the existing path is not fit for purpose. Um, I assume at this point we're referring back to the path up to Big Mustard Drive. Um, then the, the next question why does the footpath need to be brought down to the road? There's a 10 meter gap between the road and the bottom of the ski run. Is that something, um, Alan Mora, you can you can comment on? No, it's the first I've heard of uh, that issue, um, but I can clarify that. I'll yeah. Can Aaron be brought online or what? Uh, I can I can yeah. give Aaron the opportunity to talk if you like, Aaron. Yep. Good evening. There you go. Good Hi, Aaron. Um, it's just something that's been brought up a few times. Is if you look at the Scrubbers End concept plan drawing, that footpath comes down and is hard up against the road. Um, but it's actually about a 10 metre gap between the road and, um, and the bottom of the ski run, essentially. So we'd sort of always wondered about whether or not, why that footpath necessarily needs to come down to the edge of the road and whether or not there could be fairly easy parking along the bottom, straight off the side of the road, along that entire area by moving the um, that footpath back six metres. Okay, so the current footpath, uh, Aaron, 
is right up against the road? Well, it depends on the time of season as to whether it exists or not. But on this drawing, it's hard up against the road, um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. Right. Um, and while we're looking at this drawing, there's um, five black dots at the bottom of the ski run. That was going to be an extension of the existing netting that's at the bottom of the um, what was the toboggan run, not yep. the toboggan run, the tube run. Yeah. Um, is that included in the current schedule of works? No. All right, because that was one of that's actually one of the items that started this entire conversation about the bottom of Scrubbers End was the safety of um, people coming off the bottom of the ski run and going down across that road. Um, so the extension of that net is a pretty critical infrastructure item. I think it can possibly be put back on the agenda at some point. Okay. Um, I'll inquire further about that. Uh... But the moving with the parking along the side of the road, I mean, we, it was brought up at a few of the feedback sessions. It's never come up on any of the drawings, but we'd always sort of ask the question about why that footpath needs to be brought down to the road. Yeah. Um, and whether or not, I mean, if you go to Hotham, it, areas like that are kind of a natural car parking area um, straight off the side of the road, more natural than the ones that are being added at the end of um, Scrubbers. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd also then be automatically linked to the car park um, and have great access across to, to, to both runs, essentially, P Shooter as well as Scrubbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, Aaron. I'll. Um... I'll, I'll look into that um, and, um, and uh, yeah, see if I can clarify that for sure. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Um, now we've got the technology to work. I've got um, Mez with her hand up. So I've, I've allowed Mez access to be able to talk to the group. Hopefully, Mez, you're, you're able to communicate with us. Not, not hearing anything again, Mez. So from our side, it looks like you, we've given you the same access that Aaron just had to be able to talk. So maybe there's an issue at your end. You might be on, uh, have your system on mute or microphone's not working. No. Um, just so we'll move, move back through. We've got some more questions while, while we've been chatting. So this is a question, why is there day parking planned for the industrial area? Um, well, I, I haven't got a direct answer for that. Uh, I, as I said, um, these are the concept designs that were put out to consultation um, a year ago. So, uh, you know, um, that's what funding was applied for to include those. Um, unless circumstances have changed, uh, you know, okay, I so is that something something we need to take on notice tomorrow to get, get a response back on that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, next question, God, is, is is the Shah using any of the COVID-19 grants, government grants, to cover any of these costs? So the answer is yes. So the, the funding that we've received that we've been successful securing for the bus shelter, so the 140,000, that is funding that is from the federal government that is as a result of the, uh, the COVID crisis. Um, so they've, um, they've essentially provided funding. Um, the purpose of the funding is to get the economy moving, stimulate the economy, and that's why they've put a constraint on. They want the works to be delivered relatively quickly. So the idea is to get people who are out of jobs back into jobs and, and get works moving. So the answer, in, the answer to that question is yes. Um, the, the works that we're looking at here, the Scrubbers End works, so those were committed before COVID, um, COVID impacted. So that was a commitment that we'd already made. Um, we're exploring opportunities at the moment to see whether we can um, secure extra funding for this project. So typically you can secure funding up to the point where you turn soil. So once you start construction or award a, con award a construction contract, you're, you're typically no longer able to secure extra funding because they'll have a condition that says works must not have been started. But we're exploring at the moment, Charlie Bird, the CEO, he's, he's advocating to try and get some extra funding to reduce the, you know, to, to improve the ratio of, of council funding to government funding on the, particularly around the scrubbers end. So we'll push that hard as we're doing elsewhere uh, across the Shire to see, um, to take advantage of any opportunities we can out of the current availability of funding and see what we can secure. But, but at the end of the day, we'll push as hard as we can, see what we can do. 
um, and it's in, in the hands of the bodies that are providing the funding as to whether they see that as a, as a funding priority for them. But um, rest assured, we're certainly trying to, trying. we've seen the opportunity and we're certainly trying to secure the extra funding. The um, next question, can we revisit the opportunity to use the previous tube run area for tobogganing? So it feels to me a little bit outside the scope, probably I'd, I'd be surprised if Morrow and Alan are able to, to answer that. And that feels like maybe one we need to take offline. Um, unless Alan or Morrow, you actually have any details of that proposal? I don't. Okay, we'd, we'd need to take that one offline. Um, it's not one that's been brought up um, recently that, that we've had a discussion around. Will, do you still have me on microphone? Uh, you're still speaking if you want to. Yeah, everyone sh everyone's hearing you. Uh, can I just go back to the, um, the car parking at the end of Scrubbers for a second? Yeah, I sure. Th I think some of the driver on that was to do with the um, Lizard Brewery at the time because there's no legal parking around Lizard Brewery. Um, but it was also about having parking that was accessible to pea shooter. Um, and given the recent developments with Blizzard, that part of it's moved on. Um, but if, if it, to me, it's a labelling issue. You could easily swap out some of those for the, um, the overnight parking area. Uh, but again, it was also part of that conversation about why those day parking would be better on the other side of the road, because it means that people aren't walking across an icy road to get to the um, toboggan. So I, I don't think we want to give up those parks, but they could easily be confer transferred over to overnight parking instead of day parking. Yeah, noted. And that wouldn't change the design at all. That's just a labelling uh, labeling issue like you mentioned. Sorry, which, which ones are they, Aaron? Sorry? The ones at the end of Scrubbers? At no, the east down near the brewery, just around yeah. the corner. Oh, okay, right. You could swap them with some of the ones up just above the gas tanks that are um, nominated as overnight parking. Um, I mean, ideally, any parking that's on the same side of the road as the actual activity, i.e. skiing and snow um, tobogganing, is better. Um, but you could easily make those ones at the bottom right hand corner there, over, um, long term parking and overnight parking. Oh, okay. Right. Yep. 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 That's easy. Uh, comment here that there's been netting installed, removable netting in summer at the bottom of the ski run. So that's, that's for people's awareness. Um, I've got a comment here from Mez that says, My response letters came in January 2019. What else has been applied for? Um, I don't really understand that that comment too well. So what I've explained is we secured funding um, for this project. So that was secured last year. That was a commitment made that was made pre bushfire, pre COVID. Um, we've also sought and been successful in getting funding for the bus shelters, which is uh, is COVID funds. So I'm not quite sure um, what what else. There's nothing else out there that I'm aware of other than a push to try and secure additional funding, like I've mentioned, to try and improve the ratio of funding for this project. So that there's no other applications that we've, uh, that we've made. We would certainly engage with the community before we start you know, making applications for, for additional funding and seek the support of the community to do that. Sorry, well, which, which yeah. question are you answering? Um, this is on, so it's a mix of chat and Q&A. This, this is a comment that's come through on the chat. Yep. Yeah. That says the comment says my response letters came in January 2019. What else has been applied for? Oh yes, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, also on the on the chat function. So um, at the Bush Projects meeting, it was suggested on two occasions that pedestrian access to the top of the ski slope via Tower Road be provided to avoid pedestrian access via Big Muster Drive. Are we in a position to to comment on that, or is that one you need to take on notice? I'll take that on notice too. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not included in the the current scope of the project as far as I'm aware. So not not what you're currently mm. delivering mm. within within this project scope. No. That correct, Maria. Yeah? No, yeah. no, that's right. Um, so another comment from a, a participant. Hi all. I'd be very happy to discuss the parking, safety, and footpath arrangements at Scrubbers offline. We may need to consider that moving the footpath closer to snow activities may have some safety implications. That, so that's a, that's a comment I think in relation in response to your feedback, Aaron, about that ten meter gap. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which yeah. is why those five black dots are also equally important um, because yeah. that, that permanent buffer at the bottom of the ski run, um, which is line number seven on that do document, um, yeah. is a pretty key, a critical part of the overall yeah. operation of the space. Yeah. Uh, so Me Mez has come back and clarified the question was around funding for the village centre development. So we haven't applied for any funding at this stage for the village centre development. No. So focusing at this stage on successful delivery of 
of these components. I think in the in the council report we agreed or council adopted a prioritised list. So we've we've what we've got on the screen now is items one and two on that list. The bus shelter is item three. So we applied for funding successfully um, this year for item three, and we'll we'll over time we'll work our way down the list. But at this stage, we haven't applied for funding beyond uh, item three on the list. Um, question, what is the fate of the tube hut? Uh, that's included. Uh, and uh, that's being looked at by the detailed designers at the moment. Uh, it, it appears that it's more economical to actually remove the existing hut and replace it with something more suitable. And certainly when I get the uh, uh, draft designs, I'll put that out for comment. Uh, it's to be done uh, the following summer in 21, 22. Okay, um, next question relates to funding again. Will you try to bring forward some of the other infrastructure for the village? The time frame, time frame to deliver all the items is long and we'll see many changes of councillors during that time and potentially lose support. So we always keep our eye on what funding's available and we try and align um, the projects that we've got ready to deliver with the, the funding opportunities. So the answer is yes. So what's, what's presented in the council report the priorities and the you know you'll have seen the dates there 2026 onwards and 2033 some pretty late dates we then try to present a worst case and then we look for opportunities you know as they present themselves to secure funding sooner than that so certainly that's our intent with the rest of the the, um, the village center is to look for the first opportunities that we can to secure funding for those So question here about, again, round priorities for delivery. Can we not prioritise the toilet upgrades at sub Scrubbers End for this coming winter? So that's a question for you, Maura, again, around how have the work's been prioritised and what comes this year and what comes next year? Yeah. Look, uh, I certainly appreciate, Mayor, that it would be ideal. And uh, uh, it's just very unlikely, given the, uh, the uh, design timeframe required and the need to get out and get construction done. And we need to be well further advanced than what we are now in that design. So, so it's highly unlikely we'll get it done this this coming summer. Unfortunately, Mez, try as we might, but uh, if anything changes, I'll certainly let you know. <clears throat> so, I think we've responded to all questions, but um. I'm not certain that I haven't missed one. So I'd like to give people the opportunity, if you'd like to raise your hand, if you'd like to come on and have a conversation with us, like Aaron's done, you can, you can pop up on the screen and we can have a chat if there's any specific points you want to elaborate in more detail. Or if you've, if you've missed one of your questions, if you could quickly pop it up again, so it appears at the bottom of the list, that will help us to see, um, see if there's anything that you're, you're still waiting feedback on. But quite a few um, comments there. We've, we've committed to come back with Feedback. So what I propose is uh, myself, Aaron, Alan and Maura will get together and um, we'll, uh, we'll work on a plan and we'll communicate that back. We'll do it via a newsletter or to, to all, you know, it's essentially to the, the email list that we've been sharing previous information with. But we'll, uh, we'll endeavour to do that in a reasonable time frame to, to get back on some of those questions, which were good ones. So yeah, if there's anyone who wants to raise their hand, I think you've got a button on your screen. You can, you can say raise hand, I'll see you and then we can, we can invite you into the chat. You can have a conversation with us if we've, if we've missed any points. If you want to elaborate on any comments or pop them up on the Q&A or, or on the chat and we'll pick them up on there. So I've got a question here. What's the, what's the time frame for feedback and subsequent action? So the last thing we want is another extensive consultation period, which will delay progress. So I'll hand over maybe more on Alan, maybe you can respond to that. However, what I will say is we've got some pretty tight timeframes around the funding, particularly the federal government, um, the COVID related funding, where they are requiring us to deliver everything by 30th of June. So I think that will naturally limit the amount of time we can, uh, we can spend on the consultation for those particular components. Mm. Um, but of course, we'll try and we'll try and work through those as, as fast as we can. Um, Maura, Alan, is there anything you want to talk about next steps in terms of timeframe consultation? How long it'll take us to get back to the the um, our guest today with some of the, the questions we weren't able to answer? Well, certainly the uh, the car park, the bus park and um, shelter at the exit is is critical. Um, so I need in the next couple of days to to get the background of that and um, and uh, find out 
why it was positioned there and and uh, and uh, yeah get some advice back but you know hopefully by the end of next week I need to have this uh, stitched up hopefully uh, and know where I'm heading with this because uh, yeah it's critical mm. Um, I've got a, a, a question. It says, question about chain bays for, for village. So I'm not sure what the question is. I'm not, not familiar with that question, but maybe, Mez, if you could provide some additional clarification. It's a shame we can't get you on, up on the, the speaker to be able to talk us through some of these. But um, yeah, if you want to pop a bit more detail into your question, I'll come back to that one, Mez. Um, I've got some good feedback. This is a great forum to use for consultation. Thanks for organizing it and we hope to see it continue. So like I said at the start of the meeting, we've kind of been pushed down this path by COVID and it's, it's relatively new technology. This is the fourth webinar I've participated in now and we learn and we get better with each one, but we're by no means um, specialists on Zoom and no means specialists at communication. So we're, we're doing the best we can. So I appreciate your patience and you know, hopefully you're getting the the ability to talk to us, put your questions to us, and we'll follow up on anything that we weren't able to, to respond to today. So um, yeah, it, it's good. It's, it's an interesting tool that's come out of COVID. So Mez has clarified. So can we please have a dedicated chain bay area for people to have chains fitted and removed as it's unsafe in the roadway? Maybe um, Maura, that's one for you to follow up as well. You know, in your investigations into the location of the bus bays, maybe you could establish whether that was looked into and what the what the arguments for and against were, if, if you could do that. Sure. Yeah. That's both inside and outside the village. So it's got to do with the, the um, how safe the apron is on the side of the road, outside the village, and also areas inside the village. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay, I'm not seeing any more hands up. I'm not seeing any more questions pop through that I don't think we've answered yet. So it feels like we're, we're drawing to a close on this one. Um, unless anyone wants to stick their hand up or put, put through another question. Um, really appreciate your time. I appreciate it's, it's the evening. You've got plenty of other things to do. Um, appreciate you getting together and coming in here and listening in and, and putting forward some really good questions. So our objective is to deliver the best outcome we can for the Dinner Plain Village. So really appreciate your input into making that happen. That's that's really where we want to end up. Oh, we've got we've got another question here. Cross country skiing trail signage. People are saying they can't tell where they are. The trail. So that's existing trail signage, I presume. So we can take that on notice, and we can uh, we can look into that and yeah. investigate what what the issue is. I might follow up further with you, Mez, on that one, just to make sure I understand where the issue is that people are saying that they can't see those. Uh, Will, if I could just add that we really appreciate you putting on this session. Everybody understands that we've all got a diverse range of opinions and not all of our opinions are going to get adopted, but we appreciate the opportunity to um, discuss it in this forum and I think it's been pretty productive. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate the feedback. Okay, I think at this point um, we'll wrap up. Say thank you to everyone and let you get on with your evenings. We've got a, a bit of work to do coming out of this, which is uh, which is a positive thing because that's why we hold these sessions to, to hear from you. So we'll take that away and we'll endeavour to get back to you in the in the near future with some responses where we weren't able to tonight. And thanks very much for your input. Um, I'll stay on the line because what I learned at the last webinar is if I log out, then all the comments disappear. So learn that lesson. I'll um, I'll take a copy of everything that's come up on the Q and A before I log out of the session. So that the questions. Uh, someone's asked how many joined. So I had 16 attendees at the peak. Excellent. Thanks very much then, everyone. We'll, um, we'll say good night at that point.